Hi, I'm Allie, and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple outfit using the new G5 clone cloth for Gwyn. G5 clone cloth works much the same as G3, except that Real Illusion have added some nice new features, like the double layers. After you've installed the clone cloth, if you look in your content manager, you will find a new folder in Upper, Lower, and Shoes called Clone Cloth for Gwyn. Here you'll find all the base templates required to mix and match various outfits. And you can just play around and add different uppers with different lowers to create all sorts of different looks. All uppers and lowers are totally interchangeable. Real Illusion also supply you with a number of material files for each of these uppers and lowers. These material files are installed in your materials library. For most, this directory can be found at the following location. C, Users, Public, Public Documents, Real Illusion, Template, iClone 5 Template, iClone Template, Materials Library, Clone Cloth for Gwyn. Once you've loaded the base, upper, or lower cloth, you can then navigate to your materials library and add the appropriate material. Please note that if you're using overcoat upper, you can only add an overcoat upper material. If, for example, you were to add an overcoat upper material to a t-shirt upper cloth base, you would not get the desired result. So now we're going to go ahead and create an outfit. I'm going to add Gwyn Default to the stage, and I'm going to add the t-shirt upper and the slim pant lower. The t-shirt upper actually has two layers. So we're going to go ahead and click on the upper tab, and then on the right we'll click on the diffuse box, and then the launch button to launch our Photoshop program. There are other photo programs you can use, such as PaintShop Pro, but I prefer Photoshop. The template map for t-shirt actually represents two layers, but we're going to start by cutting out the outer layer. I'm going to create a jacket, so I'm going to use the lasso tool, and I'm going to follow the pattern marks, and I'm going to cut out half of a jacket. Using Ctrl C and Ctrl V, I'm going to copy and paste the shape I just cut out to make another layer, and I'm going to turn that layer white. Now I'll make a duplicate layer, and I'll flip it, and then just move it over to the opposite side. That way I can ensure that both sides will be totally symmetrical. I've cut out a layer for the back here using the same method. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the sleeves as well. So now that I have the jacket cut out, my next step is going to be to add a new layer, which will be underneath all these white layers, and I'm going to fill it with black. This will now be my opacity map. At this point I usually like to save my project. And I usually put the name of which template I used, in this case t-shirt, in the title, so I'll remember later. And then I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Back in iClone, I'm going to highlight the opacity box. And I'm going to load the opacity map that I just saved. You can see that we have a jacket now. Okay, back in Photoshop, the remaining two areas represent the inner layer. So I'm going to cut those out now and make them white. To simplify things, I'm going to merge these two layers and label them inner layer. And then I'm going to merge the other layers and label them outer layer.
So I'll go ahead and save the opacity map again. And then we'll go back in iClone and apply our new opacity map. Now you can see that we have an undershirt with a jacket over top. Okay, now it's time to add some design. So I'm going to start by selecting the outer layer using the magic wand and I'm filling it with a pattern. Now we're going to select the inner layer and again using the magic wand I'm going to select a different pattern. We're ready now to save this as our diffuse map. Okay, now back in iClone, we're going to highlight the diffuse box and we're going to load our new diffuse layer. And that looks pretty good. So now we're ready to select the lower tab and once again launch our photo program. And we're going to follow the same method as for the upper by cutting out a shape for the pants and then turning the layer to white. I'll go ahead and merge all the layers that I cut out to make one layer and then I'll add another layer and fill it with black like we did for the upper. And once again we'll save our opacity map. And then back in iClone we will go ahead and load the opacity layer. Because we cut out the entire pant area, it's really not going to make a difference. So this is a step you don't necessarily have to take. But if you were making capris or shorts, you would have to load that opacity layer. So once again, I'm going to merge the layers and I'm going to fill them with a pattern. And then I'll go ahead and save our diffuse layer. Now back in iClone, I'll apply the diffuse layer to the pants. And we have a complete outfit. In order to add more realism to the look of your clothing, Real Illusion have provided wrinkle maps. These wrinkle maps can be found in your materials library. And what I've done is I applied them earlier and saved the JPEGs in order to use them for this demonstration. These wrinkle maps are actually bump maps so you can apply them by highlighting the bump box and then navigating to them. To increase the deepness of the wrinkles, particularly on dark colors, you can adjust the contrast to make the wrinkles look a little more prevalent. Because the pants are black, the wrinkle map isn't having much effect, so I'm going to go ahead and add it to the specular level as well. I can then play with the controls for specular and glossiness to make the wrinkles stand out a little bit more. So there you have it. Very simple and a nice looking outfit.